So you can share. Some of you the can share. Any chat is available for that. Sorry? Prakash, 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 Yeah, prescriptive and descriptive grammar we have talked about next rules to usage prescriptive yeah rules to usage means prescriptive what is descriptive usage to rules usage to rules usage to rules, to rules. that's usage right. to rules okay good very good uh, anything else and farmer sorry can Conscious learning, and conscious learning, learning and formal, formal. Okay, conscious, conscious learning, learning and non-conscious learning. Non-conscious learning. Non-conscious learning. That's right. Now learning. Directive approach and directive approach. Yes, inductive and deductive also we have discussed. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you remember these terms. Uh, I'll quickly take you through these uh, slides once again because uh, only half of you joined as it was the first class. uh so for those who are not present i'll quickly take you through what we had discussed in the last class with the slides all right so first we started out by defining grammar grammar is usually referred to as rules and regulations that govern the usage of a language but then we said uh, rule is a very rigid term so modern linguists and modern grammarians suggest uh, principles as a better word because language is flexible so principles of usage that is how it has been refined the principles of language usage and these principles are time to time they are modified by the usage usage changes then these principles also change unlike previously rules which were supposed to be rigid are rigid so that is why uh, we don't we are you know advised not to use the word rules and regulation when it comes to grammar rather better word is principles all right next uh, so we have seen the change of perception in uh, right perceptions related to grammar so conventionally old methodology or for many years uh, grammar was uh, uh, looked at and from this equation point of view rules were important usage was next okay usage depended on rules so everybody should uh, use according to the rules if somebody deviated they are uh, wrong so rules are very important this view is called prescriptive whereas uh, descriptive means it is more flexible modern approach of looking at grammar where usage is given importance usage is primary and rules or principles come from uh, the usage so the description as you can see rules emerge from language usage as it changes so as languages change as the usage changes rules or these so called principles also change that is why modern grammar we refer to it as a descriptive grammar right so descriptive versus prescriptive so olden days teachers perception was prescriptive uh, teachers approach was prescriptive now modern way grammar is descriptive in nature grammar should not be prescriptive so that has implications for us also in the classrooms which means uh, we need to analyze our students language uh, and look for the meaning whenever we assess their language whether it is a writing or speech we should analyze their language and we should look for meaning uh, and importance for meaning prime importance should be given for meaning rather than whether that uh, usage uh, uh, sticks to a prescribed norm or a prescribed principle in grammar or not so that should not be the case so this is the classroom implication for us as teachers uh, of knowing prescriptive versus descriptive grammars next we have also talked about because Uh, teaching grammar is directly connected to learning grammar uh, we discussed we said first we'll understand learning grammar how can somebody learn grammar of any language not only english so the grammar of any language can be learned in two ways conscious learning and non conscious learning most of you gave good responses for these so conscious learning means as you can see learner knows what he is learning 
learner consciously reads or listens to grammar points learning concepts with formal explanations definitions and classifications this happens mostly formally formally means in a formal setup right like in a class or formal purposes this is conscious learning of grammar next is non conscious learning so here is where learner is not aware of what he is learning learner picks up grammatical usage through a natural context and no formal input or practice is given mostly this happens naturally naturally means real life usage best example is native speakers native speakers of all languages they learn the grammar non consciously rather than consciously isn't it for example if kannada is your mother tongue you learn all the grammar of kannada through usage not through books and dictionaries right so that is called uh, non conscious learning of grammar It means usage whenever you are exposed to usage right usage of course you are picking up the right usage you are automatically learning grammar isn't it because grammar is all about right usage right usage of words right usage of sentences in general right usage of language isn't it so non conscious versus conscious right next uh, <clears throat> we have also talked about inductive versus deductive which is usually popular among teachers so in all training programs whenever we talk about grammar teaching only these two methods come into the picture inductive approach or deductive approach inductive method or deductive method so as you know deductive means first uh, rules and then examples as inductive is the opposite first lot of examples teacher gives and then the teacher deduces the rule so as i said in the previous class this theories this these two methods are good for theoretical discussion but in real classes most of the time we cannot and we should not use any one approach because that doesn't serve the purpose the problem is both of them have rules the only difference is deductive first has rules and inductive rules come later so that way inductive is a approach is better than deductive approach but the problem is both the approaches have rules and this is where we started talking about alternative ways of looking at grammar right so whenever you talk about grammar uh, you can you can uh, classify that grammar knowledge into two aspects formal knowledge and functional knowledge this also we have discussed isn't it form refers to structure or theory of grammar whereas function refers to usage so as teachers we should focus on usage in the classroom so to understand this formal and functional grammar better uh, i have actually had we have had a discussion of uh, driving as an example i hope all of you remember this discussion do you do you remember Yes, yes, sir. I've yes, drawn sir. That, yes, yes, sir. I've drawn that analogy. I've drawn that analogy to make my point uh, clear, right? So, what was the point? We should not give technical information. Grammar is technical information to students unless and until it is necessary. As much as possible, the focus should be on usage. We are like the mechanics, where we need both formal knowledge as well as functional knowledge. But when it comes to students, uh, functional knowledge should be priority because this is what prepares them for real life usage. So, does that mean uh, I am saying I am saying that formal knowledge should not go to students? No, I am not saying that. Priority should be functional practice, functional usage, whenever needed, wherever needed. You can give a little bit of formal or structural knowledge. For example. Uh, a student may ask a question related to formal grammar out of curiosity so then you may give because you are dealing sslc students and sslc student uh, by the time he is sslc studying sslc he or she would have learned a little bit of formal grammar right so that way uh, to clarify to make things easier yes we may sometimes give away a little bit of formal knowledge but mostly the focus should be functional Uh, grammar or usage right in classroom teaching practice using an inductive approach is an effective way to get learners to explore usage 
they can identify the target language and its use. Okay, sir. So, so Surya Prakash sir agreed with you. But again, I have a problem with inductive approach also. See, inductive is better than deductive. Agreed. But then, uh, my problem with inductive approach is inductive approach also focuses on rules. So what I am saying is we should not give rules unless it is necessary. For example, is the SSLC exam testing a student's understanding of rules or formal knowledge? For example, is the SSLC asking the students questions like what are the types of conjunctions? Define coordinating conjunction. Define what is the past participle. Uh, is the examinations testing? Or this is question number one. Question number two. Is this knowledge useful for student in my real life? If a student uh, knows, I'm just giving you, an, I'm just asking you a question to make you think better, right? For example, you are a student. I come to your class and I do, you know, I interview your students. After interviewing, I find out that your students know that, your students know that though, T H U T H O U G H though is a uh, uh, a subordinating conjunction. They know that it is a subordinating conjunction. But when I ask your student, can you make a sentence using though, your student fails. Now tell me, what use is this information of? The student's ability to identify that it is a subordinating conjunction. First of all, it is a conjunction and then it is a subordinating conjunction. Right? So, is this better or another situation where your student is able to make a sentence using the word though, but your student doesn't even know that it is a conjunction. Now you tell me which one do you prefer? If you are a teacher, which context of the student would you prefer? First one or second one? Second, second one. one. Obviously. Second one. Second one. Second one. Yes, second second one. we can give preference to the function, sir. You say second one. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure all okay. of you would uh, select the second one. So this is this is why I gave you this comparative situation. So usage is important means, yes, you can give. Nobody is going to stop you. You may give formal knowledge, sometimes basic information just to clarify, just for more awareness. But then we should not get into too much of technicalities. Hope you agree with me, sir. Surya Prakash, sir, I have answered your doubt by this comparative uh, uh, statement. So, let formal knowledge go if needed sometimes. But uh, it should not be limited to that alone. Ultimately, what is more important is uh, functional thing. So, my ultimate point I am trying to draw here is even if your student doesn't have any formal knowledge about a grammatical element, which is okay, it is still okay. But then, Functional usage is what is important. In most of the schools today, government schools, what is happening is teachers knowingly or unknowingly, they are focusing on formal grammar and because they are not aware of, uh, uh, you know, functional approach, how do we present it? So that is why students are not able to express, especially when it comes to grammar, they are good with uh, formal uh, knowledge. For example, if you ask uh, any SSLC student, uh, you know, what is the definition of a noun? You know, they'll be able to tell you what are the types of uh, verbs, what is a past participle. They'll be able to tell you, okay, good. But then these are not important. What is more important is the usage of these uh, words. That, that is what I'm trying to say. So that is the crux of uh, our discussion. All right. So with this, we will conclude this theoretical discussion. We'll get into a little bit of formal grammar. And then in between, I'll talk about functional grammar. Most probably in the next class, uh, we'll talk about this functional approach. As I said, uh, we are not going to talk much formal grammar also because we don't have time. Um, yes. All right. So at word level, we'll quickly revise uh, kind of, uh, I'm sure all of you know this information. So I'll, I'll my, my objective is to try to cover as many grammar points as possible. Uh, though they are basic, sometimes some teachers lack uh, uh, you know, certain basics. So I'll try to cover as much as possible as formal grammar. We'll start with word level. Uh, I'm sure all of you know. 
but uh, as i said we'll be kind of uh, quickly revising yeah to make the screen larger i'll just switch off my video and uh, we'll just interact in the audio mode we'll use the only audio mode uh, yes so i'm sure uh, all of you know nouns and noun types each one here represents uh, a particular type of uh, category of nouns first one you can use the chat box first one <laughs> first category what is it proper proper noun proper noun proper noun actual noun proper noun actual noun next one proper common common noun common noun common noun common noun common noun common noun that's why that's why because i am sure all of you would know this that's why i am not telling you i am just eliciting through examples you can say this is a kind of inductive approach you can say <coughs> this i am using this with you because you are teachers but i will not use with students because first of all if i am a teacher i would never ever discuss <coughs> noun types of nouns with my students this is not uh, needed for them okay when i am doing an activity i may do it but then my only priority will be is this knowledge useful for my students in their life that is what uh, i have got so much of uh, i don't have time to do useful things most useful things only if i have lot of time that is different okay Okay, the third one. What about the third category? Pen, sand, air, water. Concrete nouns. Concrete nouns. So nouns which have physical, 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 physical existence. Physical existence. Physical existence. Yes. Next one. Next one. Abstract. 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 Uh, concrete nouns or material nouns where they have uh, their virtual <laughs> concepts right yes next one chain thought value cake boy abstract material abstract material abstract not abstract hello how can you say they are abstract <laughs> countable nouns they are countable nouns anything that can be counted anything that can be used as singular countable nouns nouns countable nouns next one yes. rice so or rice oil or coal calcium uncountable noun what about the last one collective noun collective noun collective noun collective noun collective these are types of noun types of noun now what about functions of noun are you aware of functions of noun means what do nouns do in sentences look at the first sentence can you tell me what is the function a bell to a bell yes first sentence proper noun yeah that is a proper noun but what is that noun acting in this sentence subject subject, subject of the sentence subject right. 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 second one right. object uh, object right. Correct. Right. See now, just now we talk about formal versus functional. Here also we can apply that. When you say noun, it is a formal name. When you say subject, it is a functional name. Okay. What is it functioning as? What does a noun act as in a sentence? So first sentence tells us one function. First function is nouns act as subject. <laughs> subject is the most important part of a sentence. That's how we define it. Next second sentence. object 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 this is another object of the verb object of the verb that's right third object. sentence <laughs> object it is a preposition yeah indirect object whenever whenever a noun follows a preposition you can treat it as indirect object so direct object indirect object next fourth sentence object <laughs> This is also a noun. Teacher is a common noun, but what is it acting common. here? What is the function? Describe what grade is. Somebody who is good with grammar should be able to tell. What is the function of the word teacher here? What is it acting as? Compliment. Yes, very good. Venkat Ramana sir mentioned compliment. That's right. Compliment. That's right. Amala Kalaiwani compliment. A compliment is a word that describes a subject or an object, uh, 
and which is usually a noun or an adjective. Now we are not talking about adjective because we are not talking about complement here. We are talking about the functions of a noun. So we are talking about one of its functions, which is a, a complement. Usually, a noun is a complement after a B form. Usually, B form will be there, no action. That's why Giri is a teacher. Kiri was a teacher. Kiri will be a teacher. All these are B forms, isn't it? I am a doctor. I am happy. She is excellent. She is smart. So you see, all B forms take a complement after them. So a noun or an adjective that comes after a B form is complement. Right? So these are the functions of nouns. Next, uh, we have something called cases of nouns. Again, this is also part of teacher's grammar. Uh, this case applies to nouns and pronouns. It is simple. When a noun is in the subject's position, we call it subjective case. First sentence. Second sentence, objective, objective case. case. Isn't it? Possessive. Third sentence, possessive. possessive case. That's right. Possessive case. When does a noun express possession? When a noun takes apostrophe, yes. That is when it expresses possession. So that time we say that that noun is in possessive case. So, subjective case, objective case, possessive, possessive case. And the last one is reflexive <laughs> case. Actually, this is a pronoun, but then pronoun is after all a representative of a noun. So, when we want to repeat a noun again as an object, in English, we don't use uh, the noun again. For example, Ram likes Ram. Gita likes Gita. Instead, we use a reflexive pronoun. But the case is the same. It is a reflexive case. Clear? Cases? Next. Uh, types of pronouns. When it comes to pronouns, these are the commonly used types of pronouns. I am sure all of you know these. If you have a doubt regarding anyone, I will talk. Otherwise, I will skip to the next slide. Uh, do all of you know, are you aware of all these types of pronouns or you want me to give examples for any of these? If you have a doubt, you can ask. Otherwise, I'll just skip. Yes? You want me to talk about a particular pronoun? You give me, I'll, I'll, you name it, I'll just, uh, we'll talk about it. Awesome. Which one? Please. Awesome. Correct the reciprocal pronoun. Pronouns. The reciprocal pronouns. There are only two reciprocal pronouns in English, right? Each other and one another. Each other, one another. Because there is a reciprocal action there. Reciprocal action means mutual action. We use this in mathematics. Reciprocal equations. High school teachers, as high school teachers, you should have heard it in mathematics, right? So each other, one another. Personal pronouns, you know. We, she, he, she, they all. Relative pronouns? Can somebody say if you know? Who? Who? Himself, who, myself, who, 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 that, 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 which, which one, who, who, all these are relative who, pronouns. Who, which, and that. These four that, are yes. relative pronouns. Who, who, which, yes. and that. Yes. These, these words, when they come in the middle of sentences, they, are, they act as conjunctions, sir. That is when we, I mean, to join the sentences, sir. That is when we call them as relative pronouns, okay? Uh, interrogative pronouns means uh, when a pronoun... Uh, WH word. Yeah, WH word represents something or somebody and asks a question like, who are you? What do you want? These kind of, uh, you know, words, when they represent something or somebody, plus they ask a question, okay? Yes, reciprocal pronouns prevent uh, repetition within sentences. That's right. Mutual, because the action is going on mutually. Yes, sir, you are right, Prakash, sir. Next, interrogative pronouns are, uh, yeah, interrogative pronouns is over. Demonstratives, I'm sure you know, right? This, that, this, this and that, this, those. Next, indefinite pronouns. Anyone? Somebody? Yeah, somebody, somebody, something, somebody, 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 anything, anybody, no one, nobody. All these are the indefinite pronouns. So same cases applies to pronouns also just like nouns, right? So first sentence, what is the case? Objective case. Objective case. case. Objective case. case. Uh, second sentence? Objective case. Objective case. Yeah. Here we should note, we should pay attention to one thing. 
See, for nouns, there is no change in subjective and objective form. A noun doesn't change. For example, Gita is in the subject position, it will be Gita. Object position also, it will be Gita only. But pronouns, you see, there is a different form. Same. Pronouns okay. have a different form for every case. Subjective case, there is one form. Objective case, there is one form. Third okay. sentence, you see, possessive case, there is another form. See, for only for nouns, we use apostrophe yes. For pronouns, there is no apostrophe yes. Why? Because pronouns have a separate form in the possessive case. Similarly, the fourth one is reflexive case. So now we'll have a quick look at the pronoun uh, chart. Okay, this is the pronoun chart where uh, you can see whatever cases we have discussed just now. This is the case uh, table for personal pronouns. Right? Among all pronouns, personal pronouns are the most important. Uh, why do I say why do I say that personal pronouns are most important compared to other pronouns? Voice is breaking, sir. Um, is my voice breaking? Hello? Yeah. So if it is not breaking, maybe madam, uh, problem must be from your end, uh, network problem. Please check. Yes. So, so this you have you can have a quick look at all the personal pronouns. See, personal pronouns are very important because not because uh, Suman Bandi is saying or not because some other grammar engineer is saying. Actually, we cannot. Uh, we cannot uh, determine a grammar item as more important or less important. The only criteria should be usage, frequency of usage. What is more frequently used is important from teaching point of view. That way, 90% of the time we use personal pronouns. That is why personal pronouns become very, very important. But the thing is, most of the time, teachers only bother to teach subjective case forms. Teachers don't bother to teach them other case forms, but we need to teach them and make sure our students are thorough in all these case forms, right? So that is what uh, we need to keep in mind. So as you can see here, first column, subjective case forms, second column, objective, third is possessive, fourth one is reflexive, fifth one is emphatic, but uh, both the things I have put in one column. That is because reflexive and emphatic are different but their uh, form is the same. Functions are different. Means, what does it mean? Myself, the word myself can be a reflexive pronoun in one sentence. It can be emphatic pronoun in another sentence. Many teachers don't know this difference. We'll talk about it a little while later. But I hope this table is clear for everybody. That first column, if you see FP, SP, TP stands for First person, second first person, person, third second person, person, third person, third person. First person, person is the speaker, second person is the listener, third person is the referee, about whom first and second person are referring to. That is the third person, right? The singular, plural, all that, I'm sure you know. It is just a, a collective table. That's it. Yeah, as I said, when it comes to these possessives and reflexives, there is some confusion. So we'll spend a time, little bit time with these. These possessives in English can be used as both pronouns and adjectives. There's a clear difference. You should know that. Students need not know this. Students, all, all they know, uh, need to know is usage. Right? For example, the first sentence, this bike is his. So in this sentence, his is adjective or pronoun? Can you tell me? Pronouncing. It's a pronoun. It's a clear case of pronoun because uh, uh, there is no noun following it. But whereas in the second sentence, this is his bike, it is? Possessive. No, no, no. You're getting confused. Both the words are possessives. Adjectives. Adjectives. Both are possessives. In one case, it is possessive pronoun. In another case, it is possessive adjective. That is the difference. Second yeah. is possessive adjective. Exactly. First one is, is pronoun. Adjective. Second one is adjective. Second simple. Is what is the criteria? Simple. Is there a noun following it? Then it is adjective. There is no noun following it. It is a pronoun. That's it. Here in this case, 
you are, you may be confused because he's uh, this is the same but uh, look at next example that is our house but uh, this is adjective but you have converted into pronoun that house is ours s has come but no apostrophe s yes. so this is the difference so third sentence that is our house what is this adjective or pronoun ओके okay please don't sir, talk excuse please me sir. don't talk there is a lot of uh, disturbance sir yeah because lot of many of you are opening your microphones please respond only when it is necessary that way you can minimize uh, the disturbance so last you can see the two different lists sir. first list is the list of all the uh, possessive pronouns whereas the second list uh, my your our his uh, this is the list of adjectives okay so i hope this difference is clear to everybody we'll move on to the next slide okay reflexives and emphatics as i said uh, this is a commonly confused uh, area uh, where many teachers can't differentiate look at the first sentence seema likes herself right what do you think this is reflexive or emphatic any teachers who already know this concept can answer सब्जेक्ट एंड ऑब्जेक्ट आर सेम normally subject and object are different subject is one person object is another person or thing it may be a thing also but sometimes both the subject and the object are the same person then we use a reflexive pronoun so reflexive pronoun when it is used in a sentence it is the object of the sentence it therefore it is compulsory that's why you see seema likes herself whom does she like herself Mary talks to herself. Whom does she talk to? Herself again, right? So when these pronouns are used as reflexives, remember they are the object of that sentence. That's it. That's why they are compulsory. So reflexive pronoun. Because why do we call it reflexive? Because reflexive action means what? You know, going back to the source, isn't it? From where it is go coming. the action is going back to the source so that kind of action is called reflection isn't it so same meaning applies here the action is beginning from the subject and going to the object but who is the object here it's not a different person it is the same person so the action is going back to the subject so that's why we say reflexive pronoun first two sentences are examples of reflexive pronouns but look at the third sentence and fourth sentence in these sentences number 1 the himself is not the object yes or no is it the object of the sentence no no see uh, there is there is a shortcut to identify objects in a sentence i don't know how many of you are aware of remember the questions what and whom i am typing in the chat box so that there is no confusion what and not who but whom i have hmm. typed in the chat box you can have a look at the chat box these two wh words represent the object of a sentence so whenever you have a doubt like you you are confused uh, how to identify an object uh, just remember 
these two questions what and whom if you get an answer to one of these questions yes there is an object in that sentence first sentence let us apply to the first sentence seema likes what wrong question because what is not a person here there is a person so you can ask seema likes whom herself is the object similarly mary talks to whom herself is the answer but look at the third sentence he solved what problem. problem so what is the what is the object of the sentence the problem, problem. next naina cooked biryani naina cooked what biryani biryani the object so clearly third and second sentence himself herself are not the objects because there is some other object in the sentence okay now take away himself and herself from these sentences see if the sentence is getting affected he solved the problem naina cooked the biryani so is that word really you know important there no because even without that word the sentence is still good so why am i using such a word it is not compulsory it is not important but then why am i using this word to give emphatic comes from the word emphasis emphasis means i'm sure you know what do you mean by emphasis emphasize the verb form is emphasize what do you mean by emphasize to give stress 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 to give importance to highlight more important yes, right? yes more importance so emphatic okay. pronoun is used to provide emphasis to make the subject emphatic right emphatic is a, the word is adjective okay and you say emphatic it is adjective so emphatic pronoun is a pronoun which is additional which is not the object of the sentence it is just give used to give additional importance or importance or emphasis to the noun right uh, if you take an example it will be good see this example let us add context he solved the problem himself see this problem nobody could solve only he solved so definitely i have to give importance to him isn't it so he solved the problem himself means yes, nobody yes. helped him he yes, did yes. it on his own that is why you are giving additional yes. importance okay so that kind of situations we use a emphatic pronoun but reflexive pronoun as i said that pronoun itself should be the object okay yes somebody was asking about to ask something who is that what was your question so shall i move on is it clear difference between reflexive and emphatic yes sir yes sir okay. yes sir yes sir okay we'll move on to the next to the next thing so adjectives so all of us know that adjectives are describing words isn't it so each one here represents a different category uh, first one what kind of adjectives are they honest kind large bulky what is common for all of them qualities quality that's right this is the most important uh, characteristic of an adjective adjectives describe quality so this is the first type and most important type next quantity quantity quantity, quantity. that's right these are general words that are used for quantity okay Uh, Vasudha, madam, you have raised your hand. Uh, do you have any question? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Or is that by mistake? I want to say mistake? that it uh, uh. by mistake I touched it, but I want to say it as quantity. Quantity, correct. Right, that's okay. right. Okay. Sorry. Be careful when you press that hand raise button. Normally, uh. hand raise button is for uh, uh, telling the uh, teacher, I mean instructor, that I want to sort as uh, talk. i want to say something so be careful with your uh, hand raise option sometimes it happens by mistake especially if you are using a mobile mobile phone smartphone okay so the second list is quantity so these are the main two aspects of adjectives they either describe quality 
or quantity. Next is one, two, three. Number. 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 The numbers also numerical. come under quantity. Numbers also come under quantity. We just uh, while talking about types, we just have a different name. That's all. But because they also wherever one, two, three comes before a noun, it always represents quantity only, isn't it? The only difference is when you say all, so many, many, some. You are not specifying the number. When you use a number, you are specifying the exact quantity. That's all. Countable. Okay, sir, who is that? Okay, what about the next category of words? First, second, third? Demonstrative. Demonstrative. Ordinance. No, no. First, second, third, seventh, fourth list. Ordinance. Yeah, ordinals means what do they specify? These are also adjectives, but what do they specify? Do they specify? Quantity? Place, quantity, place, quantity, place, quantity, place, position, 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 position. Not number, not quantity, but position, order. Position. You can say position, order. you can say order, you can say chronology, right? Yeah, chronology. That's First column, second column, third president, second president, third prime minister, chronology of prime ministers, right? The order, the position, yes. the rank, rank, all this. All so this is purely used purely for, not for quantity. This looks like a number, but it is not quantity, but it is the position or the rank or the order of something in a group of things or group of class of people, right? Yes. Sir, uh, Surya Prakash, sir, I, distributive adjectives are different. <laughs> distributive words are each other and one another, right? Uh, some grammarians refer to them like that. Actually, reciprocal pronouns we call them, but some grammarians refer to the same words as distributive adjectives, but then uh, these don't come under distributive adjectives because ordinals are not about distribution. They are about the position or order, okay? Okay, next one. This, that, these, those? Demonstrative adjectives. Now, if you noticed, whether you noticed or not, we have talked about demonstratives in pronouns. We have talked about demonstratives in adjectives also. So, just like possessives have both functions, demonstratives also can have uh, uh, both these functions. In the sense, uh, only by looking at the example, you can uh, see. For example, look here. This bike is his. In this sentence, the first word this is a pronoun or adjective? Adjectives. Adjective because it's followed by a noun. That's it. Simple criteria. Next sentence you see, here there is no noun. Is there a noun after this? No. No, straight away we have the verb. So this cannot be noun. It has to be, I mean, this cannot be an adjective, this has to be a pronoun, okay? So that is the difference. The question is whether it follows a noun or not. If it follows, it's adjective. Otherwise, it is a demonstrative pronoun, okay? Next. Yeah, last, what, which, whose. There are very few words. Uh, these words we can consider as interrogative adjectives because... Number one, they are asking a question, so interrogative. Number two, they are followed by a noun. So, every WH word in English cannot be used like this. Only these three can be used. For example, whose pen is this? <coughs> asking a question, number one. Number two, whose is immediately followed by pen, which is a noun. So as long as any word comes close to a noun and qualifies it, is a qualifier, isn't it? So, interrogative adjective. Which dress do you like? Which book do you want? You see, like this. Can I move forward? Yes. Yes. Can I move to the next slide? Sir, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, this is something just for your information, that's all. This is not related to teaching, learning, but then as teachers, as I said, 
we need to have a little better when it comes to knowledge and uh, technical knowledge so usually most of the adjectives which are basically adjectives these adjectives we can call them as pure adjectives pure or basic adjectives most of the adjectives we use fall under this category okay so all smart uh, angry uh, smart intelligent short uh, tall all these are basically adjectives so they are they belong to the first but there are two more types of adjectives which we use on daily basis but uh, normally grammar books don't talk about them so at least we should know as a teacher that yes proper adjectives second one is proper adjectives the name itself gives you a hint proper noun sometimes we use them as adjectives before another noun with or without without a small modification for example india is the name of a country just by adding one n to it indian i am using the word indian to describe the word economy right so the word indian is describing the word economy economy is a noun isn't it so this indian is giving me additional information about which economy yes or no so this kind of adjectives are called proper adjectives next sentence there is no modification only directly we have used the noun english is already the name of a subject but here in this uh, expression english is a proper noun teacher is a common noun but english is qualifying the teacher in the sense it is acting as adjective isn't it so this kind of uh, adjectives are uh, proper adjectives southern railways right so all these are uh, similar uh, category nouns next uh, verbal adjectives just like proper nouns sometimes we frame adjectives out of verbs also so originally these adjectives were did not exist we people users we have created these adjectives out of our convenience over time for our convenience we have created these uh, words just like broken chair so broken is the past participle form of break isn't it yes or no yes sir breaking yes sir break present participle yes sir past past participle yes sir past past participle past participle and present participles of verbs before a noun and a noun we use them as adjectives isn't it you see so uh this is just one example break is just one example uh, can you think about other examples like where verbs uh, are used as describing words either ing form or uh, v3 form past participle form arjunan mk arjunan the working model sir arjunan mk are you from tamil nadu arjunan you yes, are from kerala you are from kerala uh, are you from kerala or tamil tamil nadu sir? kerala kerala sir kerala kerala yes. sir no one yes, from tamil nadu sir recently there was an arjunan who came uh, last year for cld so i was wondering if you are the same arjunan no no sir no sir i am kerala so sir in this sir, training no one from tamil nadu oh in this batch no one from tamil nadu correct correct last yeah, time yeah yeah sir yeah sir yeah i yeah, asked sir. i forgot correct but oh. arjuna <laughs> is a typical tamil name if you know it <laughs> so i got misled okay um yeah go ahead go ahead give your responses uh, think about uh, yes very good anuradha gave an example tough end glass very good tough end glass that's a past participle but being used sir, as a Sorry, the drizzling rain. Drizzling rain. No, drizzling rain. We don't call it like an adjective. Drizzling rain. Uh, the rain. It is. It is drizzling. We say it is drizzling. We don't say drizzling Twink. rain. Twinkling star. Ah, twinkling star. Twinkling star. 
Yeah, twinkling star. Yes. Sir, sir, swirling water. Ah, swirling water. Right, swirling water. Correct. Yeah. Moving train. Rustling water. Sir, rustling water. Rustling water. Walking dogs. Correct. Now. Rustling water. Sir, yes. Rustling water. Now we have got train. lot of example. Working model. Flying saucers. Flying. Moving water. train. Yeah. Broken heart. Swapna has given a broken heart. Swapna, madam, do you have a broken heart? Why have you given that example? Do you have a broken heart? Yes or no? You can respond. Oh, she doesn't have. No, a sir. No, no. No, sir. Okay, she doesn't have. She just thought of a broken. No, no. Riding bike. Okay. Walking foot. Okay. Yes, yes. Flying bird. Uh, correct. Riding bike. Yes, yes, yes. I have a doubt, sir. Correct uh, ship. Rising sun. Correct. Uh, I have a doubt. Correct ship. Ah, uh, shrinken face. Mary, Mary has said shrinken. Is that the right third form of uh, shrink? Mary, madam, please check a dictionary. Shrinken. Shrinken. I want you to check a dictionary. Don't, don't give me assumed answers. Normally we assume whatever we know is right. Shrink is the verb. Check in a standard dictionary and tell me what is the past participle of shrink. She has shrink used the shrink and face. Is it sir. shrink, sir? Shrink. I don't know. Shrink. I don't know. Shrink. You have to go. To wrinkled, shrink. wrinkled hair, sir. Right now. R wrinkled hair. Again, wrinkled. Please check hair. the dictionary. Wrinkled. Is it the right? Uh, uh, past participle form. Sir, I have a doubt. Shrink, shrink, sir. Yeah, shrunk is the right V3. That is why, please do not assume that uh, whatever we know is right. Usually, we, we pick up these things from usage. Common people, is it is okay. Whatever you pick up from usage, you can use. But we are not common people. I already told you. We are like the mechanics. Whatever we do, whatever we say, should be standard. Okay. Are you allowed to be clarified, sir? Yes, sir. What about walking feet? Can walking be treated as an adjective? Definitely. Because walking is a present participle. Here, in this expression, it is used yeah. as adjective. See, this is the beauty of the things. Sometimes we have to look at the function of words gender, rather than gender the form. See, see, walking, by form, it is a, no, a verb. Right? By form, it is a verb, present participle form. Correct. But in this expression, it is acting as a describing word. What kind of stick are you talking about? Are you talking about a coke? Are you talking about a long stick? Are you talking about a short stick? Are you talking about a wooden stick? Are you talking about a walking stick? You see? As long as it is describing, that's it. It is functional. It is functioning as adjective. Form may be a verb. Right? Sir, a drawn picture. Yes, drawn picture. Okay. Hello, sir. Drawn picture. Yeah, drawn picture is correct. But what I am trying to, I mean, see, you should do you should do one thing, sir. See, picture is always drawn. Because without, when it is not drawn, you cannot call it a picture. And there won't be any picture to call it a picture, right? What I am trying to say is, though your example is right, is right. That doesn't have that a real have like, like using uh, values. Sir, broken leg. Like, anybody to say this is a drawn picture or something like that. Something like that. Broken leg. Like so think about something, about something which you can use it in real life. Yeah, tattered uh, clothes, clothes, flooded city. It has a blank we have one lesson on the Wrong example. Wrong example. Bunking, Bunking, Bunking class, you cannot class, use that cannot as an adjective. Bunking class is verb here. Is You have used it as a verb. It cannot be adjective. Means when you say bunking class, that bunking should specify the type of class. So is there a specific type of class called bunking class? No. So please be careful about the meaning when you are giving an example. Don't just blindly put an ing form beside a noun and say it is a verbal adjective. You have to look at the usage, you have to look at the meaning. Sir, may I? Boring yes. movie, sir. Example, sir. Sir, written story. Yes. yes. Sir, written story. Written story. Sir? Yes, madam. Sorry? Sir, boring it? movie, sir. Boring, boring movie, sir. 
Boring movie. movie. Okay, boring movie. Correct. That Karshan Ram ki glowing face. Glowing, glowing face. face. Correct. Tankeshit. Wrinkled cheeks. Running yeah. nose. Running nose. Very good. Sir, deserted house. Deserted alarm house. Alarm means clock. Yes. Sir, alarm means clock. Alarm. Alarm means clock. Clock. No, alarm clock. It comes under the second clock. category. Alarm is a noun. So now we are talking about verbal adjective. Only verb should come. Okay. Shocking so, news, sir. Shocking news. Correct. Deserted person. Yeah, deserted person. Deserted place. Deserted home. Dark. Surprising. Surprising. Yes. Surprising gift. Correct. Surprising gift. Okay. We'll stop here. We'll stop. Okay. So this is just for uh, relating to real life usage. That's all. Many such a uh, uh, lot of such words, of are, such there. words are there. Normally we don't Normally teach we don't the such kind of words kind of because, because they are best they are picked best up to pick from usage. usage. There's no need to There's teach, no need these, to teach words these words because, 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 because they are very commonly used. Commonly but at least if somebody suddenly somebody asks, suddenly asks asked, at least we should know. Okay, should know. this is acting as adjective, and this is what we call it. Right? Right. Thank you, sir. Yes. So next, uh, next we'll just uh, we'll we'll talk about we'll verbs. About verbs. Verbs is verbs a compulsory is part a of a sentence. Is it true? Is it true what I said? Verb is a compulsory part of sentence. I said. Is it true? Yes, yes, yes sir. Yeah, because you cannot Not frame a sentence in English without a verb. There should be a verb in a sentence. Now, what is a verb? What are the types of verbs? I'm sure more, all of you know. But before that, let us uh, talk about uh, the functions of a verb. Means, what does a verb do in a sentence? When there is a verb in a sentence, what can it do? What are the different functions? There are only three functions of a verb. First one. First one is represented in first two sentences. So you can guess what is the function. Do more than action. 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 Correct. Action. A verb can action. represent third, an action. Third one is stay. No. stay. Third one. First, first. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Talk about first. One by one, we'll go. First one is represented action. in first action. two sentences. So, what is action. the function? A verb. Action. 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 This is the most important function of a verb. Ninety percent of the time, verbs represent. <laughs> Verbs are actions. Out. This is the most important thing. Yes. Uh, this is common, and then all of us know this. Now look at the third sentence. Sarah is a doctor. Is, is there an action? Be a doctor. Be a doctor. Yeah. There is no action, but there is a verb is, which is a be form. So what is this doing here? You know, stay. Yeah. What is it? It indicates Yes. This verb here is. It indicates state of being. State yeah. of being. State means state. Whose state? Subject's state. Right. So a be form is used to represent state of being. State of being can be present, past, and future. Sara is a doctor. Present state of being. At present, she is a doctor. Arun was a good singer. Past, not now. Next, future will be. Priya will be a doctor. Means now she is not a doctor, but she will be in future. So will be is used for future state of being. So remember, wherever you have a be form, is, am, are, was, were, or will be, they represent state of being. Please remember. But when? When they are main verbs, not when they are auxiliary. Please remember, in this sentence, Sara is a doctor. Is is the only verb. Is this main verb or is this auxiliary verb? Auxiliary verb. Main verb. Main verb. Main verb. Main verb. It belongs to auxiliary category, but in this sentence, acting as a main verb. Main verb. Main verb. Because that is the only verb. That's it. That's it. So second, to, third, and fourth sentences are examples of state of being. This is the second possession verb. Ah, the third one is 
A verb can express possession, but which verb? There is a specific verb have, have forms. Absolutely. That is have, has, had. Has, has, and has, has are for present possession, possession, past possession, past had, had, future, will have, will have, will have. Will have, will have. So past possession, past possession present possession, possession, future, future possession. 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 So this, these are the this three functions three of verbs, verbs, which means which make any make sentence. Any sentence. The verb should be one of these three things. Either it is an action or it is a state of being in the form of be form or it is a state of possession. Function is state of possession. Through My voice is very sound because you are keeping your microphones open. Some devices, I don't know how, how if your uh, phone has that kind of peculiar problem, problem, if your microphone is open, it will resound. Janardhan, sir, please, please close. I am sure now, yeah. Can you see now there is no echoing? So certain devices, you should you should be aware of this. Like if your device is open and then echoing is happening, then you should immediately close. Speak only when it is necessary. All right. So let's stop here because it's time. I've got another class here in the face-to-face -face program, uh, three o'clock. So we'll stop here. Stop here. We'll continue the discussion in the next class. Next class, tell me. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So Thank you, sir. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.